A quiet afternoon in San Francisco in the spring of 1906. Electrified streetcars share boulevards with the first automobiles. A hint of coming changes in the new century. Since the California Gold Rush of 1849, the city has grown steadily, and by 1906, a quarter million people call it home. Then, suddenly, on April 18th, their lives are shattered. A massive earthquake. Nearly a thousand people are killed, and thousands more injured. Fires ray out of control for four days. Novelist Jack London is an eyewitness. San Francisco is gone, he writes. All the shrewd contrivances, the cunning adjustment of a 20th century city, have been thrown out of gear by 30 seconds twitching. California's governor commissions a scientific investigation. H. Reed, a geologist from Johns Hopkins University, arrives shortly after the quake. He finds creek beds, roads, and fences displaced by up to 15 feet for 300 miles down the California coastline. Reed studies measurements made periodically since the gold rush and discovers that distant points on either side of the quake have moved gradually apart over the last 60 years. His guess is that this gradual motion built up stress or a fracture line in the Earth's crust and then finally snapped. But Reed has no idea why this happened. As anyone else. Major funding for A Science Odyssey is provided by the National Science Foundation, America's investment in the future. Additional funding is provided by the Arthur Vining Davis Foundations, Carnegie Corporation of New York, the George D. Smith Fund, Becton Dickinson, working to help all people live healthy lives by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and viewers like you. National corporate funding is provided by For most of human history, people turn to religion or myth to explain the mysteries of the earth. In Mali, they believe the world is molded out of clay by the one God. This mask represents earth and sky connected by water. In Iceland, earthquakes were said to be caused by warring gods. Until that is, Christianity arrived in the Middle Ages, and earthquakes and volcanoes became the work of the devil, originating in hell. Beliefs also differed widely about the Earth's age. In 1650, an enterprising cleric in Ireland even tried to calculate the exact moment of creation. By following the chronology of Bible, Archbishop Usher declared that the blessed event occurred on October the 23rd, 4004 B.C., at precisely 9 a.m., only 6,000 years ago. But increasingly, science has its own say. 
How could just 6,000 years possibly account for the Earth's natural features or its proliferation of life? As for the origins of earthquakes and volcanoes, they might well lie beneath our feet. Hell seems an unlikely place. And so, as the 20th century dawns, scientists have a good idea of what isn't true, but few facts about what is. At the turn of the century, the Earth is still a mystery to the scientists who study it. Its age and origins lie at the center of a great controversy. Most scientists of the time believe that the Earth was formed from material torn from the sun. Then, as the Earth cooled, its crust contracted, buckling, cracking, and collapsing. Geologists thought the parts that were left higher became the continents. And the parts that were lower filled with water and became the oceans. Lord Kelvin, the great British physicist, is de determined to settle the matter of the Earth's age once and for all by using this theory of a cooling planet. Kelvin tried to provide a numerical estimate of how long it would have taken the Earth to cool from this red-hot phase down to a temperature where animals could walk around. And he came up with an estimate of around 100 million years. Lord Kelvin's name is synonymous with science. The now 80-year-old physicist has been at the forefront of scientific discovery in Europe for over 50 years. At the age of 23, he became the youngest professor ever appointed at Glasgow University. Devised the absolute temperature scale that still bears his name. But geologists rejected Kelvin's calculations. Huge rock faces made from sediment surely took more than 100 million years to form. People were, were looking at these enormous thicknesses of sediment. Uh, they would go out to the beach and see that these things must have been laid down a millimeter at a time or less, and that uh, the amount of sediment increasing in, say, a bay or a river over people's lifetimes was minuscule. The only possible answer to the dichotomy here between huge thicknesses of sediment and very, very small deposition rates was enormous quantities of time. So when Lord Kelvin said definitively that the Earth could only be 98 million years old, what he was doing, in fact, was ignore hundreds of of years of work by geologists and in fact uh, even when they protested that his number was based on uh, pure theoretical considerations without any uh, observational tie uh, he basically uh, said I'm Lord Kelvin <laughs> stuck with it that way in 902 in an increasingly confident Chicago an American geologist prepares a counterattack T.C. Chamberlain of the University of Chicago, a scientist of great dignity and authority, rejects Kelvin's most basic assumption that the Earth was hot when it formed. And developed what he called the planetesimal hypothesis, which is that the Earth had accreted from small bits of dust, rock, and small planets in the solar system, in the early history of the solar system, that had come together, collapsed under gravitational attraction, form a solid, cold Earth. The other issue that 
Chamberlain raised was Kelvin's assumption that the only source of heat in the Earth was the original heat from when the Earth first formed. And Chamberlain said, well, maybe, but maybe not. If there were other sources of heat within the Earth besides simply that original heat, then all of Kelvin's calculations would be questionable. They'd be incomplete. He wouldn't be looking at all of the variables. Another heat source is found. It's one of the great discoveries of science. Radioactivity. In London, in 1904, at the Royal Institution of Great Britain, a physicist is about to suggest that radioactive minerals exist throughout the Earth's crust. The physicist Ernest Rutherford plans to say the heat from such radioactivity throws off all of Kelvin's calculations. Now, as he was about to say this, and that's why physicists love to tell this story, he looked up and saw that Lord Kelvin sitting in the back of the room. And he said, oh, God, he said to himself, what, what am I going to do? And he remembered at the last moment, he said, Lord Kelvin's estimate for the age of the Earth need no longer be attended now that we've discovered, as Kelvin pointed out, that uh, his estimates were only good if there were no additional source of heat. And there is such an additional source of heat. And uh, having seen uh, Kelvin's eyes snap open as he mentioned the word Kelvin, he saw Kelvin beam from ear to ear as he um, established the Earth was old, but that Kelvin had been correct. But how old is old? Once again, radioactivity provides an answer with a new technique. Radiometric dating. A normal background radiation sounds like this. But this rock... is a little more interesting. And it's this rock which turned out to be the clock, which allowed us to date the Earth. The rock contains uranium, an element that loses subatomic particles over time. Those losses change uranium into other elements with fewer particles. It's a process known as radioactive decay. If you leave uranium around for years, it all turns into lead. But it turns into lead a little bit at a time. So you can measure the rate at which it turns into lead. But you know this rate, which is not hard to figure out physically, watching the process happen in real time, you can go to a rock sample break it open, and measure the relative amounts of different kinds of lead and uranium in it, and determine from this how long it's been since the rock cooled. Um, this was a phenomenal discovery, and in the very early and most simple attempts at it, it was discovered that, in fact, the Earth had to be an order of magnitude older than previous estimates had argued for. And the average looked like it was about two and a half billion years at that time. Ultimately, rocks are found that are four and a half billion years old. That's 45 times older than Lord Kelvin's Earth. And 750,000 times older than the Earth of Artiship Usher. 